Welcome to the Story Takes Responsibility podcast, a show for companies, marketing teams, and founders looking to improve their storytelling through video, make the process easier, and feel more confident walking into their marketing plans. Our mission is to add value through our decade plus experience in making video production more than just videos, but videos with objectives and partnerships with brands that value consistency. Our hope is that this podcast makes you more sustainable and budget conscious in your marketing efforts. This show will inspire ideas and value, but most importantly, we want you to take action towards better storytelling. Okay, so the subject of this episode, we're going to be talking about the idea of when exactly is the right time to start a video project? This is a conversation that we have, of course, every time a client hits us up uh, or really hits anybody up. If you are a client, if you're somebody that gets contacted by clients, whatever it may be, there's always this kind of, I don't know, cloud or, or maybe a little bit of like a mist that surrounds like when's the right time to start a video project? Because a lot of people tend to wait. I think we can honestly say they tend to wait until the last minute. It's like, hey, it's week of, hey, we need a video project next week. We've got this event. We've got this thing, whatever it may be. Um, Or sometimes, I don't know, maybe they plan too much in advance and they find out that they're not actually even ready to pull the trigger on a video project. There's sort of that sweet spot, at least that I think that you and I have learned over the years, working with many different types of clients of all shapes, sizes, all that sort of stuff, a bunch of different creative elements that goes into that. So let's break that down. I'm going to throw the floor to you. Walk us through. Let's get started on the idea of when is the right time to start a video project? How do we find that sweet spot? Well, like you said, it's, it's kind of an art to a certain degree. You know, there's no perfect time, but I'll, I'll think back to earlier in our career and other businesses and other projects where there'd be this imaginary deadline of we have to get this done. It has to be at this time. And I think that's the wrong way to start. So even more importantly is it's just kind of having a conversation, you know, people like us or video production companies or agencies, we exist to ask good questions. The quality of the question that we ask is what kind of determines when this needs to get done, the appropriate time required, because every project isn't equal. You know, if you have something that's like very narrative driven, has actors and has like multiple locations and all these things, logistics, you know, as a producer, putting my producer hat on, it takes a lot more time to align multiple schedules to align all these moving ideas and to do that with ease. So for me, it's like, let's start with a conversation that's really holistic. That's the best place to kind of start for us to together decide what's the best place to do this. So we always work with our clients to kind of figure out like, when is the best time, whether that be a payment schedule, whether that be, you know, what this is pushing. So, so understand what's the objective, you know, who's the audience, where's this going to be used? What's the utility of this project more than what's the idea. And I think it's really easy when you think about video production, like we have this idea, we have this thing. That's a great starting place. We love when someone has an idea or they have all these things, but to just kind of properly diagnose to dive in and kind of be like, Well, you know, like, let's ask some more questions. Like, I'd love to understand where this idea comes from. What are the initiatives for this? What does like good results look like at the end of this project? And that's going to help advise this. You know, if it's something super simple, like a testimonial film, and it's just a matter of coordinating the testimony in the right location and getting some supportive B-roll, we could plan that pretty fast. But if it's something that's like, we have to align all the senior leadership, some workers, and we got to do this over a course of a few days, Maybe it's actually more realistic for us to look 45 days out to make sure everyone can still get their day-to-day work done and also make time for this project. Because the last thing we want to do is, is push something and someone has something else on their mind. You know, stress can be the, the, the biggest thing from like dampening, like the productivity or the quality of a project. So let's make sure everyone has the time to plan for this, to think for this and to give it the right amount of time and energy. So before we dive deeper into like, the onboarding process itself, something, and we don't have to trail off too far into this. This is sort of a little bit of a side tangent, but something that I love that, um, I think it was you years ago that, that heard somewhere else that we've kind of, uh, heavily implemented into our process is the idea of committing malpractice yeah. is the idea of not just sitting in. And so what we mean by that is obviously we're not doctors we're video production people here, but the idea of just hearing that somebody wants a project and immediately just saying, yes, let's just do it. Here's the price, whatever it is, and not really digging into the reason why we're doing that. Right. Yep. So one of those big things, and I think that you touched on this a little bit when it comes to a pre-production process or an onboarding of a client, it's less about necessarily the project at hand or the price point that we're trying to get to or the deadline like you led with, but more so at least where my mind usually goes is, 
the purpose. What's the purpose and the intention of why this video project needs to be completed? Because to be honest, there's been a lot of times in the past where somebody will have contacted us for a video project with that immediate deadline of, oh my gosh, it has to be next week. And then we actually realize once it takes maybe a little bit of poking and prodding and maybe two to three questions of, okay, well, why does it need to be next week? What do we need to do in that time? Digging in with just a couple of questions actually has often made them realize, oh wait, this actually doesn't need to be next week after all. Yeah. We can actually do this next month or we can do this three months from now. And that's not out of necessity of, oh, we have to push it back or we need all this gear. Or we need to even necessarily not even need to plan more, but it's more so, hey, when we try to uncover the purpose and intention for why we're doing this project and more so why it needs to be done so quickly, we actually see some cracks in that plan. Yep. We see some some room and, and some gap there of like, oh, wait, we actually don't know why. Maybe we were so urgently planning for this outside of we know it's a thing we need to get done. And it sounds kind of exciting. So whether you want to talk about like kind of the uh, in the creative world, not committing the quote unquote malpractice or more so digging into uncovering the purpose of a production and why that's often the most important thing, at least that should be led with. I don't know which direction you want to take that in, but I think those are huge parts of any onboarding process that we're going to put a client through, yep. at least when we're going to do a project with them. Yeah, I mean, malpractice is a big deal. So again, kind of quoting the win without pitching manifesto is like, I saw that as a guidebook as something that we were already doing, but I didn't have necessarily the language for it. And, and the whole idea, you know, if you look at our process within our company, myelin is obviously a medical term. So our process isn't pre-production, production and post-production. As a matter of fact, ours is diagnose, prescribe and implement. Diagnosis is all about the discovery. It's understanding the problem. It's asking the right questions. And that is the biggest emphasis because when we start there and we actually understand what's working, what isn't, what hurdles do you have? How do we design that into a strategy versus just a video? This is when we start to get towards return on investment or some quality results. That's maybe the healthier way to look at it. But if I'm not asking those questions, then we're kind of just acting as a video production company. We've landed on this, you know, call it creative partnership because of this model. Once we get through that diagnosis, you know, asking the proper questions, then we can prescribe the right solutions, the right strategy, the right videos, the right film types, all this nitty gritty stuff. But if I can't earn your trust, if I can't get our clients to be vulnerable or to open up or to share with us, then we're not going to be a good fit from the beginning. That's part of that diagnosis. It's not just asking good questions and figuring out what we have to do, but it's really getting to the problem under the problem. If you say, okay, we, we need to do a video because we need to show up on social media. Well, what's the real objective? Is the objective that you want to be on social media or is the objective that we feel like no one's hearing us and we have this great quality experience? okay, there's a couple of ways to do that now. So instead of, you know, one of the bigger problems is like someone's like, I want a video that does this, 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 and this. A good video really has one objective and it maybe has some secondary byproducts that come from that. So doing multiple videos that have different objectives that actually all support the overall mission and goals, that's again why this diagnosis, our discovery call, that process is taking the time to ask those right questions. It's working through that. It's making sure that we're not just going at this for creative sake. It's making sure that this video production process is fun for all parties. Like stress is something I'll emphasize over and over again. This is two ways. I want our clients to be in the best headspace, whether they're sharing the story, whether they have a lot writing on the product. And I want our team and I want anyone involved with us, you know, to have a feeling of, wow, this is a great project to be on. I feel really empowered to be a part of this work. And that feels really great. One of the problems that we've kind of saw over the years is you look at agencies that might be super disconnected from the production process. Now I'm not saying everyone does this, but what I am saying is like, they get really excited about the creative, they get really excited about the strategy, but they don't necessarily understand how to implement and make it understandable. On the flip side, you have video production companies that maybe don't spend any time on the creative. So a big piece of our discovery call is understanding what kind of partnership do you want? Are you willing to sail the ship or do you want someone to help sail it with you? That helps me to understand how I can be the best partner with you. I don't have a problem if you just need a production and you have great vision and you just need someone to make this video production process more simplified. We can come in and do that. That's a different model. Maybe we're working with a director, a producer, a CMO, or an agency that really has good vision. 
okay, I'm not going to come in and step on toes. We can design a different kind of production. But inversely, maybe you really don't have any idea of like what the strategy is. And it's like, you want this really done for you. That's where this creative partnership model comes into play where it's like, okay, let's come in, let's do a workshop or let's work beside you. Let's work into our pre-production, you know, the implementation, which is pre-production, production and post all in one thing. It's really the easiest part. Once we get past that diagnosis, we get into the prescription of this, which is that workshop and like pre-production, like mapping things out. We move into the physical part of pre-production with lining things, getting things set up, locations, yada, 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 into production, into post. So, you know, it's just understanding which part of the process you're in and giving it the right amount of effort. And we put a lot of attention into that diagnosis phase because if we don't do that right, we can't get the rest of it right. And that diagnosis, honestly, is just as much for us as it is the client, at Definitely. least in, in, in my opinion from a lot of the stuff that we've done, is sometimes it is figuring out, like, are we the right fit for this client? It's not just, oh, cool, a new video project popped up. Like you said, a lot of people tend to, and not that this is right or wrong, but, like, a lot of people tend to just see the shininess of a new project or the shininess of a price tag on something or whatever it may be. And they're like, oh my gosh, let's just say yes. Let's grab the cameras. Let's set up the lights. Let's point and let's just make stuff. That diagnosis process is just as much for us to determine, are we really the right fit? Because just like you said, are you looking for someone to come and just sort of point the camera at the thing that you need and you've got the creative control. You've got, you know, you've got the understanding of what you're trying to do. You just need to someone, you just need someone to come in and execute. Yeah. Right. Or is it, Hey, we do need to quote unquote, sail the ship together. We need some guidance. We need some help here. We know what we want, but we don't know how to get there. And we don't exactly know what it looks like. So let's formulate that together. And I think one thing that we focused on so much over the years is honestly eliminating that power struggle. Because I think that's oddly a big thing that happens in the creative and or production world specifically is there's often a power struggle. It's, oh, well, I want my creative ideas implemented or no, 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 it needs to be this budget or nothing. Or there's always some sort of push and pull rather than just a clear communication. And I'll just keep using that buzzword of diagnosis, right? There's no clear intention put into what the project is, what it actually needs, and more so what it doesn't need. Yeah. I think you and I tend to spend just as much time telling a client what they don't need from us and what we don't need to do for them just as much as we do by saying, hey, yes, we do need to do this for a project. There's, there's a healthy balance there. And I think that's something that you and I focused a lot on with Mylan over the years is eliminating that power struggle to make a smoother process through the whole pre-production talk and all that sort of stuff because it's no secret that having a you know, basically a, a meeting, a, you know, whether it's Zoom, call, whatever it may be, having a meeting, there's always this kind of dancing around of when are we going to get to the price tag? When are we going to yep. get to the, it's such a transactional thing. Eliminate, el eliminate that entire pri like process of that conversation and make it more about, hey, we're getting to know what needs to be done. We're getting to know you and why, again, going back to that intention and purpose yep. part. Let's get to know the why that we're doing this. And everything else is going to actually build around that. Once we figure out the core piece as to why we're even having this conversation in the first place, everything else is going to kind of naturally fill in. Yeah. So we've talked a lot about the pre-production process. We've talked about that onboarding process. Let's talk about the production itself. Because honestly, so much of what we have said up to this point, it's the exact same way and the exact same uh, sort of energy that we tend to lead with on production day. So just because, you know, we're not, we don't go from uh, easy to talk to people just to get you in the door and make the sale. And then we get to production and then we just zone in and we we become, you know, tech heads or whatever yeah. it may be super focused on like lighting and camera and all that sort of stuff. That emotional connection, that human element that stays there on our productions. And I think I will pat ourselves on the back and say that over the years, that is probably the thing we've emphasized the most. Yeah over just the quality of the visual that we're doing, that comes, that's there. Yeah. We know we've got that, we know we're gonna make a quality visual, but it's the experience on production that needs to be there more than, more than anything, because again, that's the greater intention, that's the greater purpose. Yes, we want to make a good product at the end of the day, but how we make that is gonna leave a much either nastier or better taste in someone's mouth than what they actually get at the end. So walk me through or build on top of that, like the actual production process. Yeah, I mean, there's the thing, plan the work, work the plan. 
And that sounds so cliche, but it's so often very true. When I think about, um, you know, us kind of going under production, this is the most exciting part for the client. And we could make it about the gear. We could make it about the beautiful image. And I'll be the first to say, like, I love the gear. I love the image, but it supports the story. And the story is the first piece of this. So when I'm thinking about, like, how do I want our clients to feel on the day of? I want to make this complicated, overwhelming, somewhat intimidating process of video production where the big cameras and the big lights come out. I want that to all fade away. I want that to melt away. I thought you were going to say you wanted to make it complicated <laughs> and overbearing. I was like, wait, yeah. hold on. This is taking <laughs> no, a whole different direction. You know, I, I think we do a good job of bringing all these toys out to play with and no one pays attention to them because it's not about we're working with this camera or this lighting package or anything like that. I know the intention and the purpose and the usage and the utility of all those things. But more importantly, I know what your objectives are because we made the plan. Secondly, as the producer, my big goal is how do I get the right freelancers on set that understand what that plan is too? You know, as a freelancer for years in the commercial space, one of the things that would drive me bonkers is I'd get on a project and it would be three quarters of the way through the day. I'd finally know what we were actually making, what we are working towards. So I couldn't be helpful until I had that information. And there's this weird hierarchy thing. So for us, I want our clients to be able to ask questions. I want our crew to be able to ask questions because when we're all working that plan together, that's when information becomes power. I could put the best plan on paper and I could hold that from our crew. I could hold that from our client. But when we invite this collaboration and from the first phone call through pre-production into production, that channels its way into post-production, into delivery, and it makes this relationship piece that we emphasize so much. So when I'm thinking about once I experience, like at the end of the day, what story are we telling? Are we setting it up for people to be comfortable? Like if we're doing talking head content, which is 90% of what we do. Okay, we're, we're, we're telling the story. Does the person out there feel comfortable enough to have the conversation, to share the thing that's going to move your business forward? You know, if we're doing a client testimonial, have we set it up for them to be comfortable enough to share their story that's going to meet your future audience? Asking the right questions, pre-vetting these clients the right way, making sure we're supporting you plays a big role on production and getting the right story. You know, one of the things is like you and I kind of work, I tend to be more on the team side of things on production. It's like, I'm leading the team, I'm organizing those things. Yes, I help in the directing. Yes, I help in the storytelling. But I usually do all that work up front and then I hand that off to you because you're so much better at that than I am. And I'm really good at thinking about what's the next move we have to do to make the most of this time, to make the most of these dollars, to make the biggest impact on our client. That's where I'm always thinking about time. Time is money. Time is impact. Time tells the story the best. I don't want to rush the important parts, but I want to be so well planned that we can make the moves. You know, when we're doing like 11 interviews in a day, that can be really challenging. But if we simplify it and we make it about what matters most, we can actually do that really easily. We can pull some tricks out of our sleeves to where we can still get all these great stories. We can still manage time. We can still be respectful of things. That's, you know, planning the work, working the plan. I think the biggest point there too is is that video production itself, when you're physically there doing it, um, truthfully, it just it just doesn't have to be as complicated as a lot of people make it out to be. Yeah, you eliminate things like that power struggle. You add in things like clear communication, clear goals, and knowing the intention why we are doing what we're doing. Why are we trying to get 11 interviews in a day? More so than that, it's not just do we need to get these done in eight hours or 10 hours, but more so what's the quality of these interviews? Why do they need to be done? That's why, like in our our dynamic. On a production, yeah, I'm probably gonna be the one that's doing the interviews and getting to know the client and sitting down and making sure that they're comfortable in that environment. One, because clearly I just love talking to people, but there's also that balance to where you can keep the production end going and I can keep the relationship end going because something we learned years ago is it's very easy to often check out of one of those. Yep. And a lot of the times it was both of us trying to handle everything and do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And it's like, okay, let's just lean into our strengths. And that exactly mirrors leaning into the strengths of the project. And we build those strengths by knowing why we're there and what we're trying to do. Now, something else you mentioned is how, again, this entire process continues to go through the entire project itself. So you mentioned post-production a little bit. Yep. Let's lean into the post-production process because I'll just ask you this. Uh, hey, do we film with a client and then never speak to them again until we send them a Dropbox folder with their project in it? Uh, no, we do not. Wait, actually. there we go. Okay, tell me how. So, so again, you know, I always say we're a relationship-first business, and that's not just to sound gimmicky, but 
in inviting and helping people understand like one of the things that i'm always thinking about is the end goal and the end goal isn't even to just have these projects release it's to give our clients the confidence to understand how to use these projects and that starts with working through post getting early sign off making sure we feel comfortable with that so when we're going through a workshop or pre-production we're talking about the different types of films we're going to create the way they're going to feel, the places that you can use them. When we're going through post-production, you know, in those first rounds, like we've tried to infuse, how do we make this stale, boring, terrible process more collaborative, more fun? And a big thing is, is like, okay, let's look at our first cuts together. You know, as someone who's been an editor for 18 years, like I still can get defensive when feedback comes up to a certain degree. And what I've realized is like, let's just have a conversation. So like whether that's in person or whether that's over a Zoom call, let's bring someone into that process to be able to see these things. And it's really nice to talk them through how to give effective feedback and revisions. I think that's where projects go to die a lot of the times. It's like, oh, this post-production process was horrible and we went through three rounds of revisions. Like we do up to two rounds and then you pay beyond that. However, a lot of the times we've talked so much through that it's like, Rarely do we ever go past one round or get even to the second round. It's a lot of times, okay, here's a, a few small tweaks, but like talk to me a little bit about this, especially when you're doing like talking head content. People second guess themselves all the time. And it's like, let's come back to the audience. Who's the audience for this film? How are they going to perceive this? And a lot of times it's just giving them the confidence to be like, oh no, that does actually meet the objective. So again, making each step of this an experience, low stress, collaborative, fun, enjoyable, positive, like that plays a big role in not only making our client's experience better, but making our experience better too. It's a two-way street. It's not about just like, let's do something that makes us look cool or we have fun or whatever the case may be. And what we've kind of noticed is when we have that dialogue throughout all the processes, then when they get the film, there's, I mean, inevitably, it's hitting publish. It's putting it out there. A lot of clients second guess themselves or they get scared or they don't know what to do with it, even though we've had all these conversations around the strategy. It's like, oh my gosh, I have to put myself out there or I have to put our brand out there in a totally new way. Video marketing can be really intimidating. So that's where let's have the conversation. It's beyond video production. It's can I bounce some ideas off of you today? Can I ask you about this? Or furthermore, can they take it to the next level of hiring you for social media to help map out a calendar, to map out a strategy, and to help maybe either consult them or physically do that for them so that we make sure that there is that win-win scenario? Because at the end of the day, we can make the prettiest video, we could tell the best story, but if your audience doesn't see it, if it doesn't have a clear objective or utility, it's never going to make any impact. And then it truly is a waste of investment. It's a waste of money. There's no ROI if it's not used. And I think one of the biggest things within that is a word that at least we, we've said probably a dozen times throughout this entire episode is you can avoid all of those things being a waste if you find out you're ready to do a video project when you understand the purpose and intention in which you want to do it with. When you get to the pre-production process, we know why we're having this conversation. Production, we know the things, the objectives that we have for that day and why we're doing them. When we're in post-production, just like you were saying, we can make that process a lot less stressful because we already know the deliverables that we're trying to create and why. It needs to go out in vertical for social. It needs to go in 1080 for YouTube. It needs to go on this for that, whatever it may be. This needs to be this, this format to go out in an ad roll. We've already had those conversations. So it even, even on the back end, even if it's someone's internal team using this stuff, they've already been set up for success. Not to say that they wouldn't have to like reformat one small thing or something like that, but all of those things come from just figuring out the intention first. And even if it does come into those, you know, quote unquote, callback conversations at the end of, hey, can we work social media together? Hey, how do we implement this into a campaign, whatever it may be? Cool, we've already got all the stuff that we need. The foundation's been laid. Now we get to build the cool stuff and implement with all of those tools and all of those things we've already like brought in throughout the entire process. So my kind of closing thing, and then I, I wanna throw it to you, my closing thing is to just simply answer the question of when do you start planning or doing a video project? For me, the answer is when you understand the intention, the purpose, and the why behind why you want to make a video project. And that doesn't have to be some existential deep out there answer of like, oh, we want to connect with the blah, blah, blah. 
it can just be we need to be more active on social. We need to tell our story further. We need to connect with new possible employees or team members or customers or whatever it may be. The answer can be simple to very deep and large and big. It doesn't have to be super artsy and crazy, but have that answer up front because a lot of the times you can tell yourself, do I really need to do this video project? Maybe I don't need to put the marketing budget into this right now and I could put it elsewhere because I don't really understand the actual purpose that this video would have. But if you can look at that and say, I understand the why behind why we would do this, that's gonna also make for a much more simplified process with people like us or whoever it may be. In having that intention there, you always know the place you're working from. Yep. It's not trying to uncover okay, wait, what's this project for? Wait, why do we need to shoot that that way? Wait, why do we need to do this this way? It's, hey, does this relate to why we're doing it? You always have that core piece and that core intention. So for me, I think uncovering that and understanding that at the beginning, even if it takes a pre-production meeting with somebody or whatever it may be to help uncover that, that I think is how you're going to build a successful video project. If you come from a place of being unsure, is now the right time or is later the right time? Yeah. Anything you want to add to that? No, I think it, to answer and to bring it back to the, the first part of that is like, I think it's exactly right. Having some general direction of what you want to do and you don't have to have all those answered. You know, if you reach out to someone like us or to another video production company or, or anyone in general, a lot of these places are going to have these conversations and these vetting processes in place. It's like if you get on a phone call and the person's like, yeah, it's this amount, we can shoot it on this day you're talking to an executor and maybe that in fact is exactly what you need. But if you need more help guiding that story or figuring out those objectives, that's what we're here for to ask those questions, to guide that, to almost treat it like, okay, you know, tell me a little bit about why you're coming to us for video, where this is coming from, what this really is about, you know, recruitment, retention films is like all the hype now. It's like, okay, is it recruitment or is it retention? Because there's a subtle difference between those two. And we help to guide that as like, okay, a recruitment might be more focused on educating. It's figuring out the exact role for the right thing to make that process more accurate. Whereas retention might be more about celebrating the culture, celebrating the team. And that comes from different people telling that story. So that takes different amounts of time. But I would say the first step is figuring out those objectives, those things, figuring out a good partner to help guide you through this process and trusting them on how long that's going to take. You know, certain things take less or more time. Don't be afraid to ask us, like, how long do you think this process will be if they're not already sharing that with you? Any last point before we say goodbye for this episode that you want to leave somebody with? Big thing you want to emphasize from this episode? Anything extra? No, I mean, the biggest thing here is just making sure if you're going into the video marketing side of things, like, don't rush into it. Make sure you get a good gut check on whoever you're kind of working with. Make sure you can collaborate with them. Make sure you feel comfortable with them, that you can be honest with them. I think that plays a bigger role than when this needs to be done. I think that makes sure that you're actually getting some results. You feel comfortable throughout the whole thing. And you're actually excited about the project throughout all the, all the, all the, blah, 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 all of the, the steps of the way. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, before Josh's brain melts and we talk about this even more, I think that was a pretty solid episode of this show. Uh, so he's been Josh. I've been Ross. And remember, story, it takes responsibility. Thanks for joining us on another episode. If you found this episode helpful, share it with a friend, rate and like, and all the things we're supposed to tell you to do. If you want more storytelling tips and perspectives from the Mylan team, please join our newsletter and visit the website at mylan.company. That's M-Y-E-L-I-N dot company. Additionally, if you need help in your video marketing or want to learn more about our method, please feel free to book a discovery call with our team or email josh at jcp.co. This podcast wouldn't be possible without all the great companies that trust us, challenge our way of thinking, and offer amazing feedback. We love to add value to other companies, leaders, and productions. Being a part of that journey is an honor. This has been the Myland Video Production Podcast. Story takes responsibility. Until next time.